if you're looking for a definition for postmodernism or postmodern literature, you will probably um, be frustrated at first by the fact that many of the sources that you'll turn to will almost surely say something like postmodernism has a number of definitions, a number of dissimilar definitions, or it has, um, by virtue of the fact of the ideology uh, it, it purports, it cannot be simply defined in some 25 you know, words or less phrase. And that can certainly be infuriating. And when you add to that the fact that a great deal of the commentary on postmodern literature and postmodern works is um, contradictory sometimes and you know antagonistic with regards to other definitions, terms, and assessments. What you very quickly will realize is that it's a it's a minefield, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is a good place to begin. I think a good way to approach the subject, uh, or the best way for me anyway to approach the subject, is to use a, a an anecdote from a professor that I had years ago, and he was talking on a very different subject matter. He was talking about John Milton's Paradise Lost. And one of the things that he said was that Paradise Lost has been talked about, argued, and debated for so long and in so many ways that as soon as you open your mouth, essentially, to say anything about it, you're placing yourself in a particular camp or group or, or, or you're becoming associated with you know, uh, a body of individuals who have considered the idea before you and talked about it before you and said things about it that, that probably uh, will or would be the logical results of the things you would go on to say if you were to talk about it. And that's, you know, that can be a somewhat distressing idea on the one hand uh, because then you might ask yourself, well, what can I possibly add uh, to the conversation on Paradise Lost? On the other hand, it can be very liberating in that you might notice that or realize that you know, there's this great deal of work that can be considered and, and assessed and juggled and I think it's that juggling and the idea of you know um, synthesizing various positions and, and realizing that there are a number of set arguments already in existence that leads you towards an idea or an understanding of what postmodernism is. By this point, you're probably confused, and that's okay, because postmodernism uh, as a as a subject, I think, is is fairly confusing, um, especially if you've never studied it before, or if you've been taught to th approach literature through concrete and you know specific definitions, many of which I have been arguing for, uh, not only in this class but in other classes that that you may have taken with me. So when it comes to postmodernism, I think there's a couple of things for us to think about. First, how might it relate to the class that we're in? Uh, we are in a class on Canadian literature. We've been reading, you know, Canadian works, discussing the themes and concerns and, and, and motifs that are important in this body of literature. So let's come at it from a Canadian perspective. I think if we do that, we might begin with the commentary of Linda Hutchian, uh, who's a very famous, uh, very famous um, um, uh, Canadianist and Canadian uh, literary critic. Um, and she comes to postmodernism under the idea, or with the idea, that postmodernism is essentially, um, and I'm paraphrasing her comments to make them applicable for our class, um, art about art that uses the conventions of art to engage social issues, to engage humanist issues, and to raise questions about the role of art in society. So when we come to a text like um, Life of Pi, or when we come to a text like The Handmaid's Tale, this semester, um, both of which have been considered by literary critics as postmodern works. We might wonder how we can we can understand them through this definition. What does it mean to be art? Kind of about art. What does that mean? Uh, it, how can a, how can a piece of artwork be about um, art in in general or about art itself? Well, I think the easiest way to talk about it, and again, this might be a slightly confusing detour, but it's pretty um, um, emblematic of postmodern discourse in general, is, is to actually back away from those books and to think about where postmodernism comes from. And it comes from architecture, originally. And ideas or philosophies um, um, or aesthetics um, that were promoted by various architects, which essentially called for the mixing and matching of uh, established traditional architectural forms the mixing of classical with the modern, uh, the mixing of you know, 
um, 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 and I'm not an architect by any means, but the mixing of you know various um, styles uh, pop that were popular perhaps in the Renaissance um, with you know um, the the, um, the American Western uh, tract housing. Um, what happens when you mix and match established styles? What what comes out of that? What happens when I take various artistic um, you know um, um, uh, trends, traditions, values? Or edifices and, and and throw them together, not simply randomly, but to make some point or some comment on these various individual pieces that I'm mixing together and on the larger project that comes out of it. Again, probably confused. And if you're not, that's okay. Um, you may think that my description and definition is either totally erroneous or far too simplistic. And that's emblematic of postmodern discourse. So as we come to the end of this very brief but hopefully um, somewhat helpful introductory video on postmodernism, I would say that postmodernism is essentially an artwork that presents itself as an artwork for the purpose of commenting on the role of art in society. It's not a satisfactory definition. If you know one though, you should probably forward it to me um, because you probably are the only one who does. All right, well, anyway, that's an introduction to postmodernism, um, and we'll talk a lot more about it in class. If it, if it comes up, um, I, I think it will be a larger part of our modern, uh, excuse me, our British uh, literature course next semester, but we will be getting into it here at the end of the semester. All right, see you in class. Bye.